and I knew her in passing, uh, basically, and uh, I just she just lit up the room. She was just such a smiling, sweet, understanding, compassionate, you know, the list goes on like that, you know, woman of God. And uh, I really enjoyed passing by and <laughs> and I, I, I mean, uh, but anyway, she was just a wonderful person. And we'll, she'll definitely be missed and remembered and, you know, and she's so into so many people's lives, you know, it's really um, valuable, very important woman of God. And, uh, you know, that makes it. Susan and I shared um, <coughs> a lot of time together. We're, We're studying the story. She was so um, my uh, best friend. Yeah. She told my niece who went to pray uh, and get an answer from the Lord. Will we always get a yes from my father? We had our adventures to Moravian Falls. And one time I thought that Susan was going to do the film and Louise with her car <laughs> off of her mountain. <laughs> we did pray about that too, or I was certainly praying a lot more on Fair Mountain. <laughs> but uh, Susan was a giver. And uh, I never knew uh, whenever I was standing in the line when we went to different meetings and everything, she was going to fall into glory because she was always in the glory. And I just finally said, Lord, I said, she hasn't fell yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, there was conversation between us. And that was the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I would watch her many times when we would go on trips, and she would wake up very early in the morning being very studious before the Lord. And um, if I have to tell you that uh, in our lives, if we have one or two people that is a God friend, then that's enough. And she was that to me, and she still is. And I uh, just wanted to... Yeah. Amen. Tell her I love her very much. They were very close. Mm -hmm. And I say joy without reservation because this is not a memorial. This is a celebration of life. Mm -hmm. And it would only be appropriate for Susan to have a celebration of life for that's the way she lived her life, in celebration. And Jeanette and I came into acquaintance with uh, Susan when she came in to join on Thursday morning with us in a small little group, little family group of about eight people. But we, we were thrilled with just the way she walks in the door. She looks for a place, she sits down, and it's a memorial to where she sits. To yeah. that. <laughs> it's, uh, that, but that's Susan, that she fit in and she began to also share life with us. And that's really what I wanted to speak about her. And I, I want to, before going any further, I want to read a passage of scripture because I know Susan you love the Mara Bible and when you were introduced to it, it you took to it and this is a portion from the Mara Bible from Philippians chapter 2 and it somewhat epitomizes how she accepted God's message of life and love and so we'll just have about five verses, the first five verses of the second chapter of Ephesians. Now, picture how God, where God found us. We were in a death trap of an inferior lifestyle, constantly living below the blueprint measure of our lives. I never heard anything like that in all my years of blueprint, that there was a blueprint, but we began to discover together 
God's blueprint of who we are and where he sees us rather than how we see and the deception of a world's view of life. Verse 2, we were all part of a common pattern swept along under the powerful invisible influence of a spirit energy. This is the Bible reading. <laughs> <laughs> the adopted, uh, that adopted us as sons to its dictates through unbelief. Mm. Throughout that time, every one of us were wrapped and corrupted in one conduct, snared in a jumble of forbidden lusts, driven by the desires of the senses, and completely engaged in an expression of life, ruled by the mind games. Hmm. Think of that. Isn't that amazing? That's where we were. It was as if a twisted passion parented a global breed of people. I think when we read something like that, it, it puts a whole different description on mankind in the fallen state. Mm -hmm. But it makes it graphic. I, I love the interpreter. He, he's French. What can you say? <laughs> <laughs> And he has a passion, but he knows how to put it in our language today. A little Frenchman. <laughs> okay. Verse 4. None of this would detract from the extravagant love of God. He continued to love us with that exact same intensity. Wow. Talk about a transition. It was God who made that, was not changed by everything that we could do wrong, he still loved us the same. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I could see Susan sitting there with something like this being read, and she just comes alive. She comes like, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this, was, this is the way she lived, right? I, I see, a, yeah, you, you know, because this is the way your grandmother lived her life, with such a love, but was the infectious love of a God who never had a diminishing bit from his extravagant love for every individual, every one. And he had a blueprint of us long before the world was ever formed. Wow. It puts a whole different perspective on life. Mm -hmm. And this is how grace rescued us while we were yet in that state of deadness and indifference in our own deviations. We were co-quickened together with Christ. And when it says we, it's talking about the entire humanity was co-quickened with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that puts a perspective on life that I never had. In all my training, two seminaries, to cover the bases, I had Protestant, I had Catholic. But I never heard it put that succinctly, that God's extravagant love so captured his attention that he sent his son because of God's love, Father, Son, and Spirit's love for us. Christ came to mirror, like the mirror Bible, to mirror in life the way that he created us to be. And God never saw us other than through Christ. Amen. His love has no buts. It's all love 
and he sees us through Christ in our cold death, burial, and resurrection with him. Christ had nothing to do with it. I mean, well, excuse me. We had nothing to do with it. God, God's grace, freed us once and for all. When it says we, it's talking about all mankind. He freed all mankind. And that's a concept I've never been taught. But it's in that translation that he has that brings to life the very meaning of the good news that all mankind, from the lies that were believed about ourselves under the performance-driven system, <coughs> and now defines our authentic identity as God created us. Susan, I hope you heard that. I just want you to hear once, once again what you loved. But this is, this is Susan, who when she saw the verses described in this way, can't you just see her face light up? And she said, wow, this is who I am? And she began to see herself in a whole new way. And I know that every time she'd walk in that door and walk across here and go to the couch that's turned around and would sit right over there, <laughs> there would be a special joy that entered the room. There would be a sense of God's love that just walks in amongst us. And that's what we want to celebrate today together, that because we were all co-redeemed in Christ, he made us one. Amen. And that's, to me, such a miracle. Mm -hmm. That it's not the human love, but a divine love that has no exceptions. It's love, love, love. Mm -hmm. And that in that love, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Many people don't know it, and many people make a lot of junk but God still sees them and loves them with the same extravagant love. And he asks us to do the same. Yeah. And that's what Susan wants to say. While you still have breath on this life, give it your best and love people for who they are in God's vision and his sight and begin to love people for who they are, not for what they've done or how they look or for any reason. Become a lover of people, all people. Yeah. And be so infectious that you'll change the management's decision about your work hours so you can be a, <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> anyway, we love Susan, and we love that she was a mirror for us of God's love. That's the basis of a joy that is proceeding from that love and a peace that passes understanding. Understanding of why at this time was a life shortened here was gift time for God just to be totally, as he always was with her, but in a special way where we will all be back to our blueprints that God created us to be. And we're already there. We just want to acknowledge it and say, invite you to also acknowledge your place in the body of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was it on the yeah, she, she, she was in our studio. Uh, some have been there, and some may have heard about the farm. We no. call it the God Farm, you know, but it's a, it's a seven-acre dedication to true authentic community what it means to live the life of what it means to be brothers and sisters. But I think you guys have probably been there maybe a few times and, and I know we're doing some things. But anyhow, I'm Jeff Perot, my lovely wife Alina, and Susan 
We had the great privilege of having her with us for the last few months that she was in this dimension. And one thing I want to bring comfort and encouragement to all of us, especially the family, is this life is like a drop in a vast ocean. We are literally designed for eternity. It, this is the truth. And this, this is what eternal life is all about. And that's what Christ gained for us. But may I speak from my heart a little bit? Yeah. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because to give you a little bit of backdrop, my wife and I are pretty picky when it comes to the people that are in the culture that we have actually tried to establish on the campus over there. Because we have this theological term that we try to operate by. You may or may not have heard this before. It's called Christocentric. And Christocentric means that everything's about him. You know, and she fit that so well. She didn't have all this pushback. She was very, very, I mean, do you know how sweet she was? I mean, she just, it was like, she was like water. She flowed. There was a certain rhythm to her that fit very, very well with us because we're highly relationship oriented. We really love people. We really love what God wants to do in people and the discovery of one another in the uniqueness of our design. Okay, and that's called imago Dei, the Latin word of, of the, the image of God in every individual. And she has worked really well in that culture. And I want to say this to you, that she spoke incredibly highly of the family. And she loved you with a love that was beyond human ability. I'm telling you the truth. There was such dedication to prayer, dedication to communicate about how much she loved the granddaughters and her daughters and the, the whole family. And I want to make that known, that with our own ears, that we witnessed that. And her devotion to her family and her devotion to really, I think the number one thing in her heart was Amen. that there would be a deeper understanding and connection, not with religion, but with the creator and your purpose of existence, yes. not just for her family, but for all of humanity. I believe that. So what I felt the passage that came to my heart was this when I was coming here, you know, driving over here, we had some car complications, but we got here. Hallelujah. I mean, we were, we were bumping and jumping down the road. The tire did some tricks or whatever, but we got here. But the, the passage was in John 14, and I love this. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Let you love the Lord. Yes. Amen. Only a God of eternity can say something like that. Amen. You know, we're, we're, we're finite beings. We're, we're kind of constrained in this time-space continuum, if you will. But he, outside of that, saw from a different perspective. And he can say, in the middle of the trials, the disappointments, the betrayals, the pain, you know, and the things of life and the heaviness and the, the things that really challenge us, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Yeah. And this was the resurrected Christ. The one who conquered death, hell, and the grave, and the intimate ones. His disciples were asking him, what's this all about? By the way, where are you going? He says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. That in my father's house is many mansions, that word is many rooms, many dwelling places. And here's the beautiful news. We're all invited. Isn't that beautiful? Talking about a family reunion. So I will say this with confidence and 100% certainty. Susan is not dead. God is the God of the living. Amen. She is very much alive. Amen. This is one of the unfortunate things for us in this in this kind of framework, we're going to miss her dearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to miss her dearly because she's not in this dimension. Mm -hmm. But she's in a greater dimension mm -hmm. that I believe we will all go to. Yeah. For in the Father's house are many dwelling places. And he says this, 
I will come again and bring you to myself. And that's that place of intimacy. I call it being hidden in the heart of the Father to the access of Jesus Christ. And I just really felt that on my heart to really comfort all of us and to let us know the greatest desire that I know from Susan is that everyone, starting with her family, that you'd know that beyond the stained glass windows and pews. Yeah. Amen? Amen. In a real, intimate, personal way. And I'll say, I'll close with this. Because we had many, like, kind of intimate house gathering sort of vibe happening where we're at. And, and, and Susan and Alina and ourselves, um, you know, maybe a handful of us get together and just had real conversation like family. And, and I just will always cherish those times and those moments and her, her countenance. Her, I mean, there was a certain radiance. Is that not true? Yes. She knew God. Yes. 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 And may that inspire all of us. Yeah. To rip the veil of religion. To know who the creator is. And here's the beautiful thing. Eternity starts now. We don't just die and try to find the dimension of heaven. But it's something we can grab a hold of right now. To have this thing the Lord called abundance of life right now. Now, so this is what I want to encourage all of us, including myself. I need it. We've been through some trials. It's been a difficult, about, about, the dip, about a difficult life for me, but say difficult like five years been very, very challenging. And really the last two and a half years went to another level of challenges. But let's grab a hold of the power and the value and the significance of living in the abundance of, of life that he has called us to right now. And it starts this way. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. It means his ways, his nature, his character. And, and he says, and his righteousness. We don't have to put our own self-righteousness. Amen? Amen. That he became our righteousness, he says. And all the things we have need of. He says he knows that we have need of clothes and a place to dwell and food for our belly. He knows all these things. He says, I got that covered. But seek me. Seek my kingdom. Seek my government. How I govern from the inside out. And I want to also bring my wife up because she had the day before this accident happened, she was with my wife on the streets sharing this love with real people going through real pain and I want to bring her up because it was an ama just an amazing story my wife Alina well, Perot first I want to say that she always had her Bible open of what she had just read and she would write down what the Lord was telling her she just always you know what God was saying to her and it was so profound well the day before well first of all I want to say when she first came to check out the place and maybe that's why I just liked her so much was because we, I was, we were showing her around the property and we had this one, it's kind of electric fencing so that the sheep don't get out. And she tripped over it. And I was laughing. She's like, you're laughing at me. I'm like, no, I just did that a week ago. <laughs> I tripped over the same fence. And I don't know, for some reason that just hit us off uh, really well. And she had such a gentle spirit, but yet she was still fiery, you know. And um, so the day before, we have a food ministry, and I take it out to the streets. I don't have them come to us. I actually make boxes and go take them out to people. Well, she came with me, and she helped me out, which was a huge help because it's a lot of work. So we went over to this one guy, Frank. Now, I've been giving him food for two years. At first, he was like this. He, he had no teeth. I didn't know. He wouldn't smile. He wouldn't look at me. But then after a while, he started smiling and looking looking at me. But I And I prayed for Frank, but I never felt like I was going to share the gospel. You know, it just wasn't, you know, the time yet. But when Susan was there, the synergy between the two of us, I mean, I felt it was his time. She was ready. I was ready. So I said, as we were, you know, gave him the box, I said, Frank, so I said, if you were to die tonight, do you know for certain if you would go to heaven? And he was like, 
No, ma'am, I got too much sin. I said, well, why do you think Jesus came? For sin? I said, well, if he can forgive any sin, can he forgive all sin? Mm. And he was like, yeah. He's like, but I drink too much. And I said, well, you know why drinking's usually just a symptom of some, something deeper. And so he says, well, things happened to me as a little boy that I can't really share. Well, then Susan jumps in. And she gives this testimony of something that happened to her. I think she was a teenager. And she shared the whole testimony with him. He starts crying. And she says, you know what? When I look back at that room where it happened, do you know I don't see the situation? I see Jesus carrying me away from it. Mm -hmm. I don't see that situation anymore. He's bawling. Mm -hmm. I mean, this grown man who's like strong, you know, I've never seen him cry. Mm -hmm. And he is just crying. And she's just putting her hands on him. She's saying, it's okay. God wants to heal you. And so we both prayed for him, and he received the Lord that day. This was the day before. So then yeah. we're going over to this other gal. She's a little black gal. Her <laughs> eye is to the side, and it looks like a man had really beat her up. abuse. Really bad, you know, like she ran away from it. She doesn't want anybody to know where she's at, you know, type of thing. And so Susan's like, we want to pray for you. She's like, she loves to be prayed for. And so she's like, yes. And so Susan just prayed. I mean, that whole day was so glorious. I felt, we both felt the presence of God. And there was just like this back and forth. It wasn't like, I want to speak now. No, I want to, I want to pray. It kind of was because we were so excited, but there was just a flow. I mean, she was not afraid of sharing the gospel wherever, with whomever, whenever. She was just so happy and so excited. <coughs> And that's kind of the picture that I want to remember, wow. you know, with her. Yeah. She was yeah. such a gentle, kind precious, person. Precious, precious lady. I mean, right away, because I'm the kind of person, I'm like, you know, living on the campus, it's one thing loving anybody anywhere. It's another thing than being in your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But she was such an intercessor, such a lover. I mean, how could you not yeah. want to have her around? And it was just rough her not being there anymore, so... We'll see, again, yeah, we'll see you again, Susan. Yeah, we'll see you again. Several of us here, um, but uh, and I've moved around quite a few times too, so I totally relate to that. Um, but you were sharing about her, her gift, you know, for evangelism and a heart, for her for the, the lost, and and um, we both shared that when we would go to uptown Charlotte and stuff, and I did. I loved. Uh, how she uh, reached out and um, cared about your favorite uh, God song that really helped you, you know, in those hard places. And um, we had a, a fun time together. Um, it was, I don't know if you can see it, we went to Greenville together one time, several years ago. And she, they have a lot of artists there. And there was one um, that drew this, I don't know if it was a sketch or painting, it looks like a sketch of Jesus, and that was her favorite one. You could kind of see it when, if you come up. Um, and we walked across, I was telling her, I'm kind of scared. She's like, no, we can do this bridge. <laughs> it's like this metal bridge that goes, I mean, it's like real steep and real high and long, and I was like, ah, oh, we're holding on to her. But anyway, um, and so we had a lot of good prayers together. We prayed a lot for our families, and I know, um, she had such a heart for you all, and I got to meet the girls quite a number of times that would come over. They're so precious. Precious. And, um, and Jordan. She just had such a heart for praying for Jordan. We would pray for uh, our, our kids, grandkids, together a lot. But yes, just miss her. She came over recently, and we had a nice luncheon out on the patio. But. Um, just yes, I know we all miss her, and that's that's a hard part. But just even as Jeff and Glenn were sharing, that we have so much that we're. I always think I see this picture of my parents that had passed a couple years ago, and um, in Florida, and I got to spend the last four months or so with them before that happened. Um, it was a God thing that I was down there at that time. But every time I see that picture sitting there, and they're smiling in this picture together, um, my dad fought Jesus for 40 years. I mean, he was 
really a raging atheist, and um, it was really, he threatened to have my children taken away because I had taught them the Bible and stuff. And so it was really a, a hard thing, but I, uh, on his last day of life, on his deathbed, I asked him, did he want to ask Jesus in his heart? And I said that first, and being heaven where mom was. And he always said, I wish I was like you all, because then I believed to see my wife again. Mm. But he, I, he couldn't talk. He had a mask on his face at that time. And I was even afraid to ask my father because he would so flip out mm. if he mentioned Jesus and get violent. So, um, not normally, but if, you, if that had occurred. And so um, what happened was I just kept feeling like the Lord was saying, I said, well, I'll do it later, Lord, and I just felt prompted. I didn't know that that was a couple hours later he, he left the earth. Mm. And so I was so thankful because uh, that was my life. I prayed and prayed for my father. But now when I see their picture, even though we miss them and I wish I could go visit them in Florida and stuff, um, to know that they are in heaven. Every time I see, I have that picture there, I just say, thank you, Daddy God, that you know, I know where they are. And, and that brings me so much joy because I know, you know, they're walking the streets of gold, probably dancing now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having a lot of uh, good time because this is, I said this morning, I said, Lord, it's not going to be boring in heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not, you're the author of fun. It can't be boring in heaven. So we know that she's, you know, probably dancing. And Robbie gave us this picture. And I just thought it looked like Susan. It's the first day in heaven uh, where someone runs up and is yeah. uh, grabbed by. Uh, but I even thought, wow, that almost looks like Susan. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so beautiful. Well, does anybody else have a little something that they, a memory, and I'll turn the air on. I know you're probably all like, oh my God, and so on. Me for six months, she was the best roommate ever. Uh, I had um, food poisoning for a week, and she was like taking care of me with Aww. pear juice and all this, or <laughs> peach juice, I think it was. But I mean, I don't think I could have survived that week without her. But I remember when she found a place to live with you guys because I put my house up for sale. Yeah. She was so excited. She's like, I would have never found this place had you not put your house up for sale. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't help her move, pack up quick enough and stuff. And we hugged in the driveway and I, I just savored that hug because I knew she was so excited about life, even more than normally. So, mm -hmm. And we, we used to always have trouble. We went to Atlanta for a conference and I'm Susan Van Horn, she's Susan Vanderberg. And they're like, what's your name? And we would joke about it. Yeah, so Susan B. Yeah, exactly. So, yep, I just wanted Aww. to say that. That's, that's precious. Years, I guess. Okay, we met Susan 28 years ago. Wow. And, um, I was a music minister in uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, yeah, in the mountains. Mm. And our pastor got sick and moved to Missouri's because he got a position there, and he he later died. But anyhow, um, so we were left without a. A church or a ministry and we were from Ohio I had shut down a company to move to Virginia so then now we prayed about it we didn't feel like we were supposed to go north and so we uh, came down here to a meeting and I met Leonard Jones and different things and so we decided yeah this would be a good place for us to move you know to Charlotte and I don't know if you've ever anyone in this room's ever tried to move to Charlotte from somewhere else mm -hmm. And it's really crazy, you know, because you don't know the good neighborhood from the bad neighborhood. And it's probably a good idea to know that when you're moving to Charlotte, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's, it wasn't a very good neighborhood where we moved, but, um, you know, all we had was a paper back then. We'd get this paper. Me and my son made several trips, and my oldest son. And there was a church uh, that Susan, um, she probably, you know, loved this church. I don't know. A lot of people did. It was called To the Praise of His Glory, okay? It was a guy named Barry Taylor, and his uh, church was at Exit 28, Lake Norman. And so I'm going back towards Virginia, which I'm going north, you know. 
And so I told my son, I said, well, let's, you know, while we're here, we didn't find a house again. I said, why don't we stop at this, you know, go to this church service, you know. And so we got there late. I don't know what time we got there, but we're in the parking lot, and we had an old beat-up escort. And Susan, I believe, drove an escort at that time. Am I correct? <laughs> and that's, she had a beat-up escort, too. You know? and, and so, love going on. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I don't know if I drove by her or she drove by me. We were both late, you know, and we're in the parking lot. But, uh, you know, everybody in this room that knows Susan, she was infectious in her laugh. And, I mean, you meet her, like, immediately. It's like, you know. And it was so funny, though. She had a sense of humor um, because she meets me and my son, you know, and she's, you've got an escort too, you know. And so, but what was so funny is she says, I just broke my tooth. And she had like half a tooth, right? You know what I'm saying? And she says, yep, just broke my tooth. She said, and, and she's smiling, you know, and, and she said, uh, she says, she says, I was praying and I fell asleep. Or, or maybe did she went, fell asleep. I don't know. She said, my head went down. She said, I hit my bed and broke my tooth. <laughs> so that's, that's when we met Susan. She had just broke her tooth. You know? And I've never met anybody who broke her tooth praying. You know? <laughs> there you go. She must have been going at it. You know? That's dedication. Yeah. So anyhow, that's, that's how we met her, you know. And uh, it, was, it was hilarious. And... So we exchanged numbers and stuff, you know, and we moved, and then Cynthia will tell you, you know, how she met Susan, you know, but we loved Susan. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Loved her family, you know. Yeah. When Mike, when Mike came home, because they hadn't found any place yet for us to move here, um, he goes, oh, I met this lady, Susan, and you're just going to love her. And so we... Lady with half a tooth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he told me this story, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is... This is really good. And uh, I kind of relate because I'm from Pennsylvania originally. And so Susan had had uh, history with Pennsylvania. But um, when I, before I even met Susan, we moved into this little house in this neighborhood off Tryon. And when we get to the house, there's these two bags of groceries. And he goes, they were from Susan. Yeah. And I wasn't there when she dropped them off, so I missed getting to meet her. And so finally, when I did get to meet her, she was just just such a wonderful friend. And you know, when you move away from friends and you go to a new place, especially for women, I think it's harder because you're more emotional and you're attached emotionally to people. And I left a lot of friends. We had our kids together and everything. So when I met Susan, it was just a real home feeling. And she mm. was just such a true friend. No. And her love for God was just infectious to me. Mm -hmm. And although we've known each other for a long time, we didn't really spend a whole lot of time together. I did get to work with Megan. She goes, oh, I have a daughter going to college, and uh, this would be a perfect job for her. I worked at this family restaurant called Bill Springs Barbecue. So Megan and I worked like four years together there. Mm. And um, wow. so... Susan lived far away from me most of the time, so me taking care of three sons and my husband and working all the time, I didn't get to see Susan a lot. But we started reconnecting again in the last two years. And she stopped by my house actually July before this had happened. And we were going to start praying together again. Well, I had two older dogs, so couldn't really leave my house, so Susan had to come to me because of the situation with the dogs but she stopped by and let me know that she found mm -hmm. the place where you were at she was so excited and I was so excited for her because she was finally in her own little space you know where she could just be there with herself and she was always believing God for a house well yeah I know she has a beautiful house now yeah. Yeah. God has made her mansion for her and she's sure. living in it and she's living life to the fullest Come on. But I'm um, going to miss Susan because she was just a true friend and just a prayer partner. When you got with Susan, you always prayed. And I just <laughs> really thank the Lord that she was put in my life and that you kids were put in our life too. And I hope that we'll be able to connect again and, 
And I just uh, wanted you to know that Susan really meant a lot to me and that I loved her and I still love her and I look forward to seeing her again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Susan and I probably met around 2013, uh, and Susan was always led by the Holy Spirit, and uh, I was going through a separation, and I was making plans to live uh, with another girl, a woman at church, and uh, Susan and I didn't know each other very well at that time. I think we met when we were both volunteering for a church activity, uh, then we joined a prayer group together. I mean, not together, but anyway, we were attending the same prayer group. But uh, she came to me and said, Dale, you're not supposed to go live there. Holy Spirit wants you to come live with me. Mm -hmm. You can't really fight Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, um, and what I want to do is be like Susan when I grow up. Mm -hmm. Because she was such, um, I've learned so much from her. Uh, and I know that Christians are not supposed to compare themselves to each other because everybody has their own walk and their own relationship with the Lord. But um, but I was just so inferior to Susan <laughs> because she just, man, she went after the Lord like she was tapping up. A bull. I mean, it's like nothing. She was going to get his face. She wanted to see the face of Jesus. And she would get up at four o'clock in the morning and read her Bible. Was I? No. She would, you know, and she would get in her little car. She didn't care how far she had to drive to a service, to a speaker, to a conference. And I just want to tell y'all, like everybody else, she was so excited to go down there. And, um, and I'm going to tell, you, you called me for a reference, and you asked me something like, did she fornicate, or did she smoke? And I thought, Susan, <laughs> I was so offended at your question. <laughs> and, then it's like, and then she told me, um, you know, all about meeting you. And that she didn't know anything about animals, and she was so ready to learn about the sheep and the chickens. And, you know, she just wanted to jump in this. And um, the uh, the Saturday before her accident, we had a perfect, perfect. I'm so thankful for that perfect Saturday together we had. And uh, y'all know I had a cousin seven miles down the road that farmed and that. Uh, raised bees and had honey and she wanted anything natural. Any, she was so, she wanted to learn anything and everything. And she just, uh, we went down there and, and some things. Um, when I went to the, I, I had COVID when Susan got hit and I was just so concerned that I was gonna be able to get down to the hospital and see her because the chances were good she was going to go to heaven. But, um, <clears throat> so I got to see her on Wednesday and Saturday before she passed away. And on Wednesday, um, the children were always very gracious. They just left the room like I was a queen coming to see Susan because they recognized it. I, I, spent, I spent a year with her as her roommate in probably 2013 and then 2017 or 18, she came and spent a year with me. Mm. And uh, oh, I lost my train. Oh, I went. To, I went to visit her, and um, and the children always, you know, left the room so we could have our girl talk and our privacy <laughs> and stuff. And so I, that first day, I, I made some commitments to her and some promises and things. But when I went back Saturday, that was. I said, and I talked to her, I, just like she can hear me, and I believe she did. But I said, uh, I'm going to look out your window and see what kind of scenery you have here. And I looked out the window, and I got so excited. I'm so excited. I know this was some kind of optical, not, not a correct, okay, I saw these big stately trees, you know, in a circle. And at the top of that, in the middle of that circle was a cross. 
Mm. And I said, Susan, Susan, you mm. get the cross. You get the cross. Out of all the rooms in this hospital, you're mm. the one that gets the cross. Mm. And now I know that, you know, that couldn't be like that because if it was, there wasn't a church underneath because of the trees. So I know, but I did see the cross. Yeah. And oh. it just... Um, and on my home, at home, on my paper, I have my little last closing comment, which I have no idea what that was. But I, there's nobody like Susan. When I met her at our church in 2013, she was hosting a home group. Um, there was a couple there with health issues that wanted to get married. They got married because Susan treated them like a mother and arranged Mm -hmm. She bought the girl's dress, she pressed it, she mm -hmm. got her shoes, I mean, prepared food for the reception. But, and she, there was always somebody she was doing something for. Mm -hmm. But if there is a legacy for Susan, it's prayer. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I know, I don't, I don't know, I don't think I told anybody in this room, but I told somebody, I said, Susan would pray for a rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that was an exaggeration. <laughs> but if that rock needed something, she would pray for it. <laughs> you know, she just... She was on that <clears throat> prayer call for five years or more, oh. daily prayer call. Uh, she called, she and her sister Connie called each other uh, probably once a week or so and prayed for their families. Uh, she is in prayer on a regular basis with a woman from her past in Pennsylvania. And uh, she came to here to prayer, to prayer, to prayer. We were in River Life, I mean, um, for our church and prayer together, but Susan believed in prayer. Yeah. And, if, and if you wanted to, if I took something to her, she said, well, you need to ask the Holy Spirit. You need to ask the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, I'm so thankful to know Susan. And I will never forget her either like nobody else will. Mm -hmm. Because she is, she is everything that everybody said, that smile, that life. I've never seen her depressed. I've never seen her. And another thing, she was a doer. I'm a, you know, I've never heard her say, I can't do that. And how many, man, I just have spoken so much negativity over me. But she knew that if the Holy Spirit wanted her to do it, or it was something she wanted to do that was in line with God's word, she could do it. And she did. She, she, she I've never seen her fail at anything. Uh, but, uh, but yes, she is with Jesus, and that's what counts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it means a lot to have heard from you all, so thanks. Mm -hmm. And we're so glad you came. So glad. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And Wendy, did you want to say anything? I'll just echo what she said. Oh, I just too. appreciate you, and we've heard everything about everyone mm -hmm. and all the prayer groups. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess we should thank everyone for praying for us too. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just like we hear right now, your mom. Yeah, we hear all the calls every morning when she would wake up and I would definitely hear her wake up. Her alarm came off at 4 a.m. for wow. her prayers and sometimes she would be asleep and I could hear the prayer call going. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I do remember when she broke her tooth. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny story. How long did it take her to get that tooth fixed, do you think? It wasn't long. I don't long. <laughs> she wasn't feeling having a broken tooth in front. <laughs> and I sure remember the 4 o'clock wake up, too. We went to... Uh... My, my prayer, uh, I have to pray. She's praying over there. I'm like, well, thanks, but... Uh... I could go back to sleep, <laughs> but it was funny. I told her next time we get together, maybe not quite so early. <laughs> but anywho, is anybody else here? I do. Okay. I got a group, um, but I'm a mother and a grandmother, and she would send me all these prayers and bring me all these things and she would pray for her family every day. She would say, oh, you gotta do this and you gotta see this and you gotta use your picture. And, and, and she just acted as if, she just had the joy of the Lord and she'd come into the meetings and she'd redo her, her schedules so she could get there and she always had something to say about her family. And it's one thing to be a mother, but it's another to be a grandmother. And 
oh, how she loves her grandchildren. I mean, it touches me because I do mine too. But she always has something to say. Yes. Always. So I know, I really believe she just had so much of the Lord in her that she walked as much in the heavenlies as she did on the earth. And she still is. And she still prays for you every day. I imagine she's hammering God to bless you and give you all the things and more. Because she didn't care what she had. She just wanted her family to have it all. So I just wanted to know that. Thank you. And I didn't know Susan that well on a personal level, but I knew her through the Thursday morning group. And she was what everybody said. She was just a beautiful, beautiful angel. She'd come in. But two things that I want to mention, she was a woman of the word. She would be in that group. She had this big Bible on her lap. And she always had verses for us that God gave her. And it was usually the Passion Translation which I didn't really even know much about, the passion and the mere translation. And she, would, she was so <clears throat> deep with everything that she shared with us. It was such a blessing. And the other thing about her was that her desire was more of God. That was what came through. Yeah. I think her whole life was that she just wanted more of him. And, to, and so I feel like her prayer has been answered mm -hmm. uh, because I see her in the spirit, she's in the glory cloud now, and when she left us, the physical world, um, I just saw her rejoicing in the spirit, and I felt she actually said, I'm happier than I've ever been. So for me, as long as I see her rejoicing in the spirit, which I always see, I say, how can I be sad? Um, I've got to rejoice uh, with her. And so that's why today I'm wearing silver, which is the silver cord, which has been broken, but the blue is the blue of power. It's the power of God's resurrection, and that has manifested in Susan. And of course, I want to add, we can all be resurrected right now, because the resurrection is right now, as someone was saying. Okay. We're resurrected now, and whether we Maybe step out know. of this body or not, we're, we're resurrected. And, and she is rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. So I'm just rejoicing with her. Amen. Yeah. I didn't say anything to the family. No. Yes, your mom loved you. Mm -hmm. and, um, yes. Those I little did. ones. And it was her great joy to have them come spend the night with us. And um, I told the girls when they got here that she was a great grandma. You know, she, she played with them. She was... Uh, well, actually, Wendy, at your house one day, I don't know if you came home while we were there, but um, I went to visit her at Wendy's, and uh, maybe I called call and said, I'm ringing your door, and she said, well, I'm out on the trampoline, on the tam trampoline. Tripling, trampoline. come out here. Yeah. So for the first time, like I was about 70, and I climbed onto a trampoline, <laughs> and we were just gonna, she was like, oh, she was on the trampoline reading her Bible. <laughs> yeah. Great, yeah. <laughs> it's like catching away practice. <laughs> yeah, she, she, but I, she loved y'all. And, and, and the one thing that she yeah, disliked yeah. about retail uh, was missing Thanksgivings and Christmas. So many Thanksgivings yes. and Christmas. And she kept saying she was going to quit retail so she could be off on Christmas and she was going to quit. Mm -hmm. But uh, she never did. But she did work around those hours. And she was... Uh, with this food line thing, she was going part time uh, to meet her hours, and it is true that uh, God just took her home, mm -hmm. and uh, and yes, she did want. I mean, I, you know, they have. I understand that people have that for staying with your family or going, you know, but they usually <laughs> choose to go because God's going to take care of y'all, and she had done her part, but uh, she loves you. And I, you knew that without me doing a repeat. Mm -hmm. Any more second timers? I would, but with the yeah, knee, okay, if it's all right, fine. like I said. Yeah, please. I know in those last seven days that we had with her, um, me observing Megan and the family trying to make the decisions because she didn't have a, a, a living will and that sort of thing. Yeah. I don't think we were ever worried about where's 
Susan was going. Mm -hmm. I never met a person <laughs> that was so <laughs> sure of where they were going. <laughs> but I think we all, during that seven days, felt like she was waiting around for, worried about us. Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I also yes. never met a person that yes. worried and helped and served her family. Yes. Much. And um, so they kind of told her it was okay. Yeah. But, but we were not worried about where Susan was going. Yes. Yeah. And um, everything that y'all said, we just echo. Like I've never, I've never met a person that served yeah. like she did. People just oh, yeah. because there were a lot of times she loved. I couldn't believe the things she was doing when she didn't have a lot of <clears throat> yeah. at, at times. You know, you're like, right. she's really doing right. that. <laughs> and one story, I was, she worried me sometimes. Yeah, one quick story I want to share is like we. The only time we were all able to go together, we went to Virginia Beach for like four days, five days, the whole family, we all got to go. And I got to meet uh, Susan's brothers and sisters. I, we never met them before, or I had not. Um, and she paid for that whole vacation out of like a refund that she had gotten. Like when we got there, we were like, we could have, I kept waiting for her to say, this is your part. <laughs> of the trip and she she took that money wow. just to get the whole family together wow. even when you know she probably could have used it for definitely oh, used it for something else so and it was a great it was a great time that's so, beautiful Chris and yeah. is this in or is that different <clears throat> no that she was there with her her family then that yeah. was the time mm -hmm. you're talking mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. on the uh, oh. yeah, Virginia so. awesome yeah. oh that's beautiful and your joy yeah. about sharing that it was also an easy mother-in-law. I got lucky. Yeah. I don't know how many easy mother-in-laws you guys have had. That <laughs> easy mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. How about amazing mother-in-law? Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful, though, Chris. Thank you for sharing that. What's very interesting about that is my mother-in-law. About that. Yeah. And we have this span of time to learn the reality. Mm -hmm. In love, we cannot divorce love from sacrifice, yeah. being givers. Yeah, that she, she's told me many times about mm -hmm. giving different things and uh, real touching with her family. And, I mean, she confided that, she mm -hmm. usually say that. Um, so, uh, is there anybody else? <coughs> or, well, well, Prayer, and it's just uh, see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So, Father, we need to honor you above all. And we acknowledge that you are the God of the living. And even Christ, in his very description of, of himself, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So, Lord, we bless. Uh, Susan, where she's at now, in great joy. And I just see this picture about this this year. It's just amazing. This first day in heaven. I just kind of see that, Lord. And, yeah, right. and that's the celebration that we all get to experience in Jesus. And, and so I pray that the rest of the day will be, yes, we'll reminisce. Uh, there's some sobriety to it in, in uh, you know, and they're, they're just to remember. But Lord, I pray there also be just a continue continuation of, of, of a certain rejoicing and a certain excitement. And I do pray for the months to come for the family. Yes. I pray specifically that Lord, that sorrow will not go beyond yes. Amen. the point. Because there is processing. And Lord, I want to just say right now authoritatively to just release the family into the proper process and no more yeah. can the enemy bring like a sorrow a, a heaviness a depression yes. uh, we rebuke any of that yes. but father we thank you for the just the permission of your spirit any of us or that we go to that that that, that level of process we could deal with things properly and we're able to have a release. And I'll say this, Susan, until we meet again.
Yes. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.